Pathpilot Quick Tips, Robot Edition. So today I would like to talk about waypoints. How to create them, the differences in types of waypoints, and how we store them. And then at the end, if we have time, we'll add a couple waypoints to a program and we'll go ahead and run it. All right. So first off, I'm gonna start by just creating a waypoint, really easy. Uh, you've seen that we can jog the machine relatively easy from some of our other, other videos just by dragging this interactive marker and we can orient the marker if we want and press hold to move and the robot goes there. And this button here, new waypoint from current position, as you might suspect, creates a waypoint based on the robot's current position. Now, when I click that, we're offered a few choices and I'm gonna talk about these choices because they affect how the robot will move to that waypoint in the future. You can see that we can either capture the pose or we could capture the joints. We could also store this waypoint local to the program, or we can store it globally. So what are those four distinctions? So let's talk first about pose versus joints. If I store the waypoint as a pose, I'm storing the X, Y, Z, and A, B, C coordinates of the robot's position, right? X, Y, Z, you know from milling machines and lathes, and A, you might know if you use a fourth axis, uh, and B and C we discussed in another video, but I'm storing that Cartesian position when I store the waypoint as a pose type waypoint. If I store the waypoint as a joints type waypoint, what I am storing is the angle of the joints from the home position to the current position. The home position is the position where the robot is at 90 degrees and kind of front and center. Um, and so if we just move one joint, you would only see, let's say if we move J2, you'd see storing the waypoint as a joints type waypoint, you'd only have a value in that, in that J2 uh, joint angle. And there's a big important difference between these two types of waypoints. Cartesian waypoints, the pose type waypoints, will change if we change the work offset of the robot. If you're familiar with our CNC machines, you know that when I set XYZ to zero in G54, that's different than XYZ to zero in G55. And I can create a program in CAM and that G code will have the machine go to XYZ zero, but, but I can change where that zero point is, right? And so waypoints that use poses are offset by our work offset coordinate systems. Storing a waypoint in joints, in joint angles, those are not subject to offsetting by work offset coordinate systems. And so those you can think of, if you're a, if you're a CNC person, you can think of a joints type waypoint kind of like G53 machine coordinates. They're absolute and they don't change with work offset coordinate systems. So that's the difference between pose and joints waypoints. Program and global waypoints, if I store a waypoint as a program waypoint, it's accessible to that program and it's stored in the program, it's actually stored in the file. That means if I close that file and I open a new program, I can't access that waypoint anymore. It's just local to the program that I'm working on currently. If I store the waypoint as a global waypoint, then that waypoint will be accessible throughout the system, right? But a little nuance here, if I store it as a global waypoint and then I take that file, you know, the program that I've written and I bring it over to my friend's robot and I run it on his robot, well, unless he's created a global waypoint, the program's not gonna work, right? So program type waypoints are local to a program. They're stored inside the actual Python file that the, that the robot runs when it executes the program. Global waypoints are stored on the system. So here, we'll go ahead and create a pose. We'll create it as a program waypoint. I'll click OK. We go over to conversational. You can see I've got a blank program here. So we only have one program, or one waypoint here, and it's a pose type waypoint. Uh, I'll go ahead and jog the machine a little bit more. We'll go over here. Uh, hold to move to marker. I'll create another waypoint here. It'll be a pose type, program type. Click OK. 
Now you can see I have two program waypoints. I'm going to go ahead and add moves to those waypoints to the program. You can see there are three different move types. We'll cover those in another quick tip video. But I've now added two moves to the waypoints. I'm going to save this program. And we can go ahead and run it. So that's how easy it is to create the program. Real quick, we're going to take a look. I mentioned that these are program type waypoints. And in fact, if we look in the program, the program defines those waypoints. We see right here, waypoint number one, and then you can see the pose definition. Waypoint two, we see the pose definition. Uh, just as a further example of how pose waypoints are offset by coordinate systems, uh, I created a very simple program. It just moves um, you know, 100 millimeters in um, X and Y. You can see I've created it here. I'm going to hit cycle start. You can see the robot. It's just moving 10 centimeters, moving around, right? And if I change my Z offset coordinate system, right, let's say I'm going to tell Z that we're 100 uh, millimeters up right now. You can see that this moved. And this, um, if I go ahead and run this program again, you'll see it's going to move down. And so that's how, that's how pose waypoints can be offset by changes to coordinate systems. Had I programmed that in joint waypoints, um, it, wouldn't have, it wouldn't have been affected by my change in work offsets. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and stay tuned for more Robot Pathpilot Quick Tips.